Thanks for joining us for CBN News Today. I'm Charlene Aaron. The digital information on your cell phones can no longer be searched by police without a warrant. That's according to a unanimous ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court. Caitlin Burke reports on the historic case. It's a bold ruling for a digital age. A unanimous Supreme Court ruled that privacy rights apply to 21st century technology, specifically cell phones. Modern cell phones hold for many Americans the privacies of life, wrote Chief Justice Roberts. The fact that technology now allows an individual to carry such information in his hand does not make the information any less worthy of the protection for which the founders fought. This opinion dismisses the government's argument that there's no legal distinction between smartphones and other physical items, like a wallet or an address book, that can be found on a suspect during an arrest. It's a huge victory for anyone who values privacy. Warrantless searches of a suspect are often justified by the need to protect officers or to prevent a person from destroying evidence. But Justice Roberts said that digital information can't hurt an officer and police may still take the cell phone, they just can't look at what's on it until they have a warrant. Still, privacy comes at a cost and some investigations will be disrupted or slowed down. The new ruling has no impact on the National Security Agency's data collection programs, but lawyers involved in the case say the justices' opinions signal their interest in the dangers of government overreach. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. A federal appeals court says states must allow gay couples to marry. Wednesday's ruling supports a lower court ruling striking down Utah's gay marriage ban. The three-judge panel voted two to one that states cannot stop same-sex marriages. It is the first time a federal judge has argued against gay marriage. Justice Paul J. Kelly Jr. warns that his colleagues are overreaching in striking down Utah's voter-approved gay marriage ban. Sixteen federal judges have issued rulings siding with gay marriage since the Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act last year. In Indiana yesterday, another federal court ruled in favor of gay marriage. The IRS is paying the National Organization for Marriage $50,000 to settle a lawsuit. NAM sued the agency for disclosing some of its tax records and donor lists to the group's top political opponent, a gay activist group. NAM is grateful that the IRS has admitted wrongdoing, but they're concerned that the Department of Justice is not investigating the case to hold the perpetrators accountable. The activist that received our uh, tax return unlawfully uh, claims to have had a conduit that would allow him to get our donor information so that they could deter future donors. But the Department of Justice has refused to prosecute him. Uh, more importantly, though, Department of Justice also refused to grant him immunity that would, we could use then to force him to answer our questions. So there's this still uh, uncertainty about who his conduit is. Is it somebody in the IRS? Is there more to this story than we've been yet able to prove? And why is the Department of Justice refusing to grant him immunity if they've already made the decision they're not going to prosecute him anyway? Nam's case is not directly tied to the IRS Tea Party targeting scandal, but it follows the same pattern of liberals using the IRS as a weapon to silence or undermine conservative groups. Speaker of the House John Bader, Boehner is considering a lawsuit against President Obama accusing him of ignoring the law and, quote, aggressive unilateralism. Boehner says Obama is bypassing Congress on certain policies. The House Speaker said the president is misusing his executive powers and asserting a, quote, king-like authority. You know, uh, the Constitution uh, uh, makes it clear that a president's job is to faithfully execute the laws. Uh, and in my view, the president has not faithfully executed the laws. White House spokesman Josh Earnest disagrees with Boehner's actions, saying he doesn't think Americans will support a lawsuit against the president. Christian villages in northern Iraq are under attack by Islamic insurgents. Thousands of Christians fled their homes as Sunni militants unleashed an artillery barrage on a cluster of villages about 50 miles from Kurdistan. The villagers are seeking refuge in the Kurdish city of Erbil. As they waited at a checkpoint, the Peshmerga Kurdish armed forces drove out to counter the ISIS assault. The U.N. estimates at least 900 civilians have been killed and 650 wounded in the fighting in Iraq. The Peshmerga is the most cohesive fighting force opposing ISIS. The name literally means those who face death. CBN's Chris Mitchell went, spent time with them on the front lines in the strategic city of Kirkuk 
and saw just how they live up to their name. The battleground with ISIS includes small villages like this one next to the border. We join the Peshmerga working with district Iraqi police right after a deadly incident. We're south of Kirkuk right now in a small village and just about a half a mile from ISIS forces. A little while ago, two bombs were set off, two policemen died. Now these forces are rounding up suspects and preparing to attack the ISIS forces. We have information that people from outside this village came to destroy the situation here. Moments after our interview, they called off the attack, but did take a number of suspects away. We drove out of the village on the way to a strategic Peshmerga checkpoint, most heavily armed like this policeman with his RPG. As we drove to the oil-rich area, you could see some of the refineries in the distance. When we arrived, we found the Peshmerga dug in close to the front lines of ISIS. This is the end of the road for the Kurdish military. This is their last checkpoint. But if you look down the road here and see that bridge in the distance, that's the first checkpoint for ISIS and the beginning of the region and the area that they control. Soon, dozens of Peshmerga and Iraqi police strode past the checkpoint. They're headed to the village next door on a critical mission. What's happening now is that the Peshmerga, the Kurdish military, is going a house-by-house house search in this village, which is just beyond their front lines, and they believe people here may be supporting ISIS. Yes, surely, because down at the bridge, we saw a teenager. They sent him to do something against us, but he hid himself. But instead of a teenager, the Peshmerga and police uncovered two terrorists, one from Saudi Arabia, the other from Sudan, both on a wanted list. Our guide translates the confrontation. His name is exist in this list, that he's a terrorist, you know? And he, the officer says, you are wanted by our force. He says, no, I'm only wanted by God. They arrested them along with a number of other suspects and took them away for questioning. In this ongoing battle, the stakes are high, particularly in Kirkuk. This is a very strategic region. Just a couple of weeks ago, the 12th Iraqi division controlled this area. They left and left a vacuum for the Peshmerga, the Kurdish military, to fill. And now they control some of the richest oil fields in the Middle East. After June 10th, when the Iraqi army collapsed, the Peshmerga stepped in and saved thousands of lives, including many Christians. For example, they protected the village of Bartilla with 25,000 Christians. But many on the front lines expect it will get worse. We expect that they want to fight. They would like to attack and fight against the Peshmerga. So we're expecting a bigger war. Earlier in the day, back in Erbil, the Peshmerga secretary general showed us on his map that now they must defend a 1,000 kilometer border with ISIS. That's more than 600 miles. They stand in the gap against this fanatical group and face a daunting challenge. But the Peshmerga say they're ready. Surely it's dangerous, but the Peshmerga are ready to fight. We are ready to protect the Arab, Christians, Assyrians, and Turkmen. We are the people of Kirkuk and ready to sacrifice our life to the last drop of our blood. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, on the front lines with the Peshmerga. Another deadly attack in Nigeria today. 21 people are dead and 17 wounded in a bombing at a shopping mall in the country's capital, Abuja. It is the latest in a series of violent attacks blamed on Islamic extremists. Two separate explosions in April killed more than 120 people and wounded about 200 at a busy bus station in Abuja. Both attacks were claimed by Boko Haram, which has threatened further attacks. More than 2,000 people have been killed in Boko Haram attacks this year. The United States is disbanding its anti-terror task force in the southern Philippines. More than a decade of fighting al-Qaeda-linked terrorists has crippled those militant groups. A small number of American special forces will remain under a new unit to provide Filipino forces with counterterrorism and combat training and advice to ensure al-Qaeda offshoots do not regain lost ground. Palestinian terrorists get salaries, raises and promotions while serving in Israeli jails and U.S. tax dollars could indirectly be going to pay them. 
An Israeli government report says monthly stipends range from $400 to $3,500. The Palestinian Authority paid more than $75 million to imprison terrorists and another $78 million to the families of dead terrorists, including suicide bombers. Free terrorists or those released in prisoner swaps get a grant of up to $50,000. Coming up, escalation. Islamic expert Raymond Ibrahim talks about the increasing atrocities against Christians worldwide. The American Bible Challenge is back. All new tonight, Jeff Foxworthy is ready to play. The whole family's gonna love it. Kurt Franklin's gonna sway. Are you ready? And you'll see the Bible in a whole new way. Don't I look chic? That was impressive. The American Bible Challenge, all new tonight, 8, 7 central, only on Game Show Network. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. If you are on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. Call the health hotline right now for details toll-free. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to take your call. We also have other pain-relieving braces available for shoulder, ankle, and your back. You may be eligible to receive these items and more at little or no cost to you as well. Call right now for details toll-free. Operators are standing by. Call 855-740-8143. That's 855-740-8143. Again, 855-740-8143. That's 855-740-8143. The American Bible Challenge is back. All new tonight. Jeff Foxworthy is ready to play. The whole family's gonna love it. Kurt Franklin's gonna sway. Are you ready? And you'll see the Bible in a whole new way. Don't I look chic? That was impressive. The American Bible Challenge, all new tonight, 8, 7 central, only on Game Show Network. Another twist in the case of the Sudanese mother freed from a death sentence in Sudan. 27-year-old Miriam Ibrahim is now accused of falsifying travel documents. Security agents arrested Ibrahim and her family at the airport as they attempted to leave the country. Her attorney says the embassy has assured authorities that the passport is genuine. Ibrahim had been sentenced to death for marrying a Christian and abandoning the Muslim faith. On Monday, a Sudanese appellate court overturned her conviction, but she was rearrested on Tuesday. She's now out on bail, and some are calling for an investigation into the State Department's handling of her case. Tina Ramirez of Hardwire says Miriam's husband, a U.S. citizen, sought the embassy's help in September, but did not get the assistance he needed. Well, Christians are persecuted throughout the Muslim world, but you rarely hear about it in the major news media. Mark Martin tells us more. More people around the world embrace Christianity than any other religion, and Christians are the most persecuted. Persecution of Christians is growing around the world, and Congress needs to pay more attention to it. It needs to be a higher priority issue in our relations with all of these countries where this persecution takes place. That persecution happens most often in the Muslim world. As the terror group identifying itself as the Islamic State of Iraq in Syria, or ISIS, sweeps across Iraq, creating a bloodbath, Iraqi Christians send out an urgent call for prayer. Tens of thousands of Christians have fled the country so far. Then there's Egypt. More than 500 Christian women have been kidnapped in that country since 2011 and forced to convert to Islam. In Nigeria, the terrorist group Boko Haram abducted nearly 300 schoolgirls and has waged a violent campaign against Christians. And in Iran, Pastor Saeed Abedini remains in prison and has endured torture for his Christian faith. The persecution takes different forms depending on the country where Christians live. In Pakistan, for example, Christians are tolerated, but they have to be careful about what they say. Simply defending their faith can lead to imprisonment and a possible death sentence there. While in Somalia, a Muslim who converts from Islam to Christianity can be killed. 
Today, Christians face violence, displacement, or discrimination in 110 nations around the world. Mark Martin, CBN News. CBN News contributor Raymond Ibrahim is the author of Crucified Again, Exposing Islam's New War on Christians. Recently, CBN International correspondent George Thomas asked him about the recent fighting in Iraq and what it means for Christians and the West. ISIS, who are they? What are their ultimate goals? Help our viewers understand what's going on with this group. Their ultimate goal is the ultimate goal of all the Islamic radical jihadists from mm -hmm. Al-Qaeda to even the Muslim Brotherhood, which is the resurrection of a caliphate and the enforcement of Islamic Sharia law. We have been talking about this for a number of years. And it was in some ways uh, like a pipe dream. I mean, this is impossible to resurrect the Ottoman mm -hmm. Empire, the caliphate, you know. It, but now it seems more like a reality. The caliphate is... Uh, uh, historically, after the, the Islamic prophet Muhammad died, it became the government. Religion and state are one and the same. Mm -hmm. And the caliphate's primary uh, business is to expand, mm. to expand territory and bring infidels under its authority. And that's what it did historically. And when you look at what's taking place today in Mosul, in northern Iraq, can you give our viewers an understanding of what does Sharia law look today for the residents of Mosul? The Pact of Omar, or the Conditions of Omar, which is an old Islamic uh, the, uh, teaching, which is what justifies, as you may know it, the mitude, mm -hmm. which is basically keeping Christians and non-Muslims suppressed. And so ISI, ISIS, is now in these regions forcing Christians to live according to this 14th century old pact in which it includes things like do not build churches, you can't renovate churches, you have to wait until they crumble, you can't show your crosses, you can't talk about your religion. You have to pay a tax. You have to pay a tribute, yeah. jizya, yeah. Uh, monetary tax, and you're basically a third class citizen. And now they are enforcing this, and, and it's, it's we're reliving history of 1400 years. Can we talk about the influence of foreign jihadis? There is a big concern amongst Western intelligence mm -hmm. uh, agencies that there are a huge number of foreign fighters on the battlefield in Iraq and Syria, and the concern is that these folks will come back. Yeah. to the Western world, come back to the United States. Are right. you concerned about this? I, I am, and, this, and, and the thing is, we have absolutely perfect precedent. Mm -hmm. If you go back to Al-Qaeda, Afghanistan, most of those fighters, they were not even Afghani. Mm -hmm. They were Arabs coming from all around the world because this is the jihad theater. We're going to go, we're going to conquer, we're going to build up a new emirate. And we saw how that ended up mm -hmm. with 9-11. The U.S., the White House, is in such a predicament mm -hmm. Because on one hand, they supported uh, elements of ISIS in Syria against the Assad regime. Now we have this chaos in Iraq. What should the United States do? Can it do anything? Or should it just sit back and watch them slaughter each other? Up until now, in my opinion, all the groups that the United States has been supporting have not been the groups that we should be, from yeah. the Muslim Brotherhood, from the so-called rebels in Syria. So we need to at least take a break back and really reassess the situation and try to figure out who are the good guys and who are the bad guys. Mm -hmm. and Actually, why don't we support the good guys? And unfortunately, the good guys, in many cases, the Christians, they are caught in the, cr in the crossfire, yeah. aren't they? Always. They're yeah. in the crossfire. They, you know, they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. They're infidels. Mm -hmm. They're minorities. They're outnumbered. They're ostracized. They have no weapons. And so they're the easiest and quickest targets. And obviously, the big concern, last few seconds, the Christians in Mosul and the biblical cities of yeah. Nineveh and so forth, they're going to Kurdistan. They're yeah. trying to get out of the right. region. Yeah. Ironically, in Iraq, after the war, and, and more than half of the Iraqi indigenous Christian population fled many of them to Syria. Now they and the Syrian Christians are yeah. trying to flee out of Syria because the same pattern has come to them and they're running out of places to go. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Raymond, as always, thank you so much. The book again is called Crucified, uh, again, exposing Islam's new war on Christians. As always, sir, thank you for thank being you, on George. the podcast. Awesome. Good stuff. Thank you. Up next, the newest tool in the fight against breast cancer. Stop. Living with hair loss, that is. Losing your hair is no fun, and no one wants to be bald, but there is hope. Getting my hair back was the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm happy with the way I look now. I'm very excited about my hair. I feel beautiful. I love my hair. Hair Club offers all proven hair loss solutions backed by our commitment to satisfaction guarantee. If you're not 100% satisfied with the solution you choose, Hair Club will apply the purchase price to another proven hair loss solution or transplant more hair at no charge. That was the best thing I've ever done. It looks good on me. Call in the next five minutes to get your free brochure at no obligation. It will tell you everything you need to know about your hair loss problem, and it's free if you call now.
I am more pleased than what I had even imagined. I at least look, I would say, five years younger. I'm 52, and I look better now than I did when I was in my 40s. I feel great. And that's not all. The first 100 people who call will also receive $250 off any hair loss solution from Hair Club. Call now. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. If you are on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. Call the health hotline right now for details toll-free. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to take your call. We also have other pain-relieving braces available for shoulder, ankle, and your back. You may be eligible to receive these items and more at little or no cost to you as well. Call right now for details toll-free. Operators are standing by. Call 855-740-8143. That's 855-740-8143. Again, 855-740-8143. That's 855-740-8143. A new tool used to detect breast cancer appears to be working better than the traditional mammogram. Lori Johnson tells about 3D mammograms and why getting one in addition to a regular mammogram is the way to go. Jennifer Heft lives life to the fullest, but the hot air balloon enthusiast and race car driver could have lost her life to breast cancer had it not been for the 3D mammogram she got. I truly, truly believe that the 3D mammography is what got my cancer early and is allowing me to pretty much live my life the way I want to. 3D mammograms have only been used for a few years. Compared to the traditional 2D mammograms, the 3D mammograms allow radiologists to get a better overall view of the breast. A mass that has irregular borders in the upper part of the breast. And this is very much typical of what a cancer looks like. Uh, hidden on the 2D mammogram, but very well seen on the 3D mammogram. Dr. Friedewald and her associates studied nearly half a million women and discovered the 3D mammograms detected nearly a third more cancers than regular mammograms did. The study appears in the most recent issue of the Journal of the American Medical Association. We found invasive cancers, or the cancers that we worry about, the ones that could potentially kill people, more frequently in women who had the 3D mammogram versus the women who just had the 2D mammogram. They also discovered 3D mammograms produced fewer false positives than traditional mammograms. Right now, 40,000 people die each year from breast cancer. But thanks to the 3D mammogram, that number may decline. Life is short, my life's going to be long and full, uh, and I'm going to go out and do the things I want to. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Attention sleep apnea patients. Are you tired of the expense and hassle of getting your CPAP and BiPAP supplies? Are you fed up with dealing with ill-fitting, leaking, or worn out masks and straps? Are you worried about the effects that unsanitary tubes, cushions, and filters have on your health? If you said yes to any of these questions, Allied Medical Supply Network has the solution to your problems. You could qualify to have your supplies regularly delivered right to your door at little or no cost to you. That's right, no more inconvenience, no worn out masks and straps, no more unsanitary equipment, just restful sleep. Call Allied Medical Supply Network today to determine if you may qualify to receive your fresh brand name supplies at little or no cost. Don't delay. Call us now to see if you are eligible to save money on regular delivery of your CPAP and BiPAP supplies. Call 1-800-815-9947. That's 1-800-815-9947. Or go to CPAPSupplyHelpline.com. Announcing an important breakthrough in healthcare that can benefit everyone. If you or anyone you love needs affordable health insurance, regardless of a pre-existing medical condition, call Quick Insurance 123 today and get the immediate relief you deserve. Quick Insurance 123 was created to provide affordable health insurance to all uninsured Americans, with or without pre-existing conditions. This is not a discount card. This is a real insurance program that lets you choose from many affordable health plans. 
with access to doctors, hospitals, emergency services, and more. So call the number on your screen now and get the health coverage you need just for calling. As a special bonus, we'll send you a free prescription savings card that could save you up to 85% on your prescriptions. That's right. You could save up to 85% on your prescriptions just for calling. Call Quick Insurance 123 to find out how you can get affordable health insurance and receive your free prescription savings card just for calling. Don't wait. Getting a free quote is as easy as one, two, three. Call today. Inside every child is a hero, a leader, a friend to others, someone who helps out, who does the right thing, who dreams of what they can be but they still need our help. What should I do? What should I say? How should I feel? That's where Superbook comes in. It provides moral and spiritual truths through situations children can relate to, teaching God's word to the children you love. Join the Superbook DVD Club and receive Superbook's newest episodes as they're available, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Get Superbook today and watch the miracles happen. A new movie based on the true story of a vagabond surfer who had a surprise meeting with God comes to America in July. As Paul Strand reports, some churchgoers who meet in movie theaters got a sneak preview. Come the closest you can get. A perfect wave is a love story, a coming of age tale, and a look at surfers trekking the globe looking for the perfect ride. Are you going to tell me about this perfect wave? It's almost as if time stands still. But the perfect ride takes actor Scott Eastwood, Clint Eastwood's son, down a road to death and beyond, all based on a true story of a young man who met God in heaven but came back to tell the tale. Popular conference speaker and author of The Circle Maker, Mark Batterson, gave his megachurch in the Washington area a sneak peek. The perfect wave isn't just a movie, but for Pastor Mark Batterson, he thought it was the perfect vehicle to reach a generation that's often more comfortable in a movie theater than it is in a church. We really believe uh, as a church that meets in seven movie theaters that the screen is like postmodern stained glass. And so the, the medieval church told the gospel story in, in stained glass to an illiterate generation. I think we've got to find a way to tell the gospel story in moving pictures uh, to a post-literate generation. Former Charlie's Angel star Cheryl Ladd plays the Christian mother who's been trying to reach Eastwood's atheist character his whole life. No matter how far you might be from God, no matter what you've done wrong, if you call out to him from your heart, he will hear you and he will forgive you. Cheryl Ladd plays uh, a character, uh, a praying mom, if you will, uh, in the movie. And I, I love that piece of the story because at the end of the movie, uh, her prayers are really miraculously answered in the life of her son. And you can see how when the perfect wave opens up in various theaters across the nation starting July 11th. Paul Strand, CBN News, Washington. Well, that's going to do it for CBN News today. You can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about at CBNNews.com. And tell us what you think about the stories you've seen here. You can do that on Facebook or at CBN News on Twitter. We hope you'll join us next time. Have a great day. God bless. Inside every child is a hero, a leader, a friend to others, someone who helps out, who does the right thing, who dreams of what they can be, but they still need our help. What should I do? What should I say? How should I feel? That's where Superbook comes in. It provides moral and spiritual truths through situations children can relate to, teaching God's Word to the children you love. 
Join the Superbook DVD Club and receive Superbook's newest episodes as they're available, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Get Superbook today and watch the miracles happen. Every day, people are connecting on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Now you can be part of the conversation and connect on topics you care about through 700 Club Interactive. Log on to Facebook, Twitter, or go to YouTube and share your opinions, your prayer requests, and your videos while making friends in our community. Well, welcome to the show. Join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. 700 Club Interactive. Be a part of the show.